Hello everyone, this is Raven Ironwing and welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about depression some more. And this video is not going to be terribly organized. Because generally speaking I'm not a terribly organized person. myself in the face of that. Here we have a blank canvas. So in my previous videos we talked about getting our needs met and how when our needs are not met it can lead to depression. But if we are still alive and obviously our survival needs are being met. So there is a distinction between our needs being met, that includes our emotional needs and things that are required for our general well-being, and our basic needs that we need just to survive. I mean, you can be cold and shivering out in the rain every day, but still survive. But that doesn't really mean that your needs are being met. And many of us that are depressed, our survival needs are being met, and that's how we're here in the first place, instead of being dead. But our deeper needs, our needs that are necessary for our well-being, are not being met. So, how is it that I have lived so much of my life, pretty much my entire life, not pretty much my entire life, my entire life, with just my survival needs being met, but almost none of my other needs being met? How have I survived? How have I not offed myself, considering I have been depressed since I was a small child? Very, very depressed. Well, I've done a lot of things to cope with depression. And to cope with the fact that my needs weren't being met. You can find ways to cope, even if your needs aren't being met. And that is my point of this video. One of the ways I have found to cope, which is a way that many of us find to cope with problems in life, is distraction. Distraction can be a healthy thing. It can also even prevent us more from getting our needs met, depending on how we do it. It all depends on how we prioritize things. But if we prioritize our responsibilities correctly, then distraction can be a very healthy thing to do so that we can engage in the moment and enjoy the moment rather than focus on all these needs that aren't being met in our lives. And one of the things I enjoy as far as distraction goes is painting. Am I good at painting? I don't care. It's art. Art's subjective. Do you have to be good at it? No, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're good at something when it comes to distractions from depression. It matters if you can enjoy the moment while you are doing it. It's all about that mindfulness mindset. Being able to just tune out all these things that are upsetting you, all of these needs that aren't being met, and experience the moment. And that's one thing that painting really helps me do. It helps me experience the moment. And I don't care if I'm good at it or not. Some people think I am, some people think I'm not. Sometimes I paint very detailed, realistic looking 
things. I don't know if I paint realistic looking things. I usually draw realistic looking things. But sometimes I, you know, participate in art that's realistic. Other times I focus on the abstract. And... I get a lot of enjoyment from focusing on the abstract because it's a way of expressing emotion with color. And it doesn't matter if you are good at painting when it comes to the abstract because it's entirely subjective. Isn't it? I used to watch Bob Ross as a little kid. Watching Bob Ross is a great way to cope with depression too. Just that great sense of peace. And his voice is just amazing. I normally have an easel that I use while I'm painting, but I don't remember where I put it. So I'm just going to hold this in my hand as I talk about depression and paint. So distraction is a huge way we can cope with depression, but you have to make sure your distractions are prioritized correctly. Otherwise, the distraction itself causes more stress. So don't be painting when you need to be paying the rent, for example. Don't be painting when you need to be taking care of your kids. Instead of letting them run wild and burn themselves on the stove or whatever. But when you can find time for yourself. It's a great thing to do just to find some peaceful time to yourself. I'm just going to keep holding this and just keep this spot here and just paint around it. Yeah, it's weird, but that's what I'm doing. So besides distraction, what are other things that I have learnt to do to cope with my depression when my needs are not being met? Well, exercise is a huge one. A lot of the time, depression is caused by tiredness and lethargicness and our body not being used for what it was intended to be used for. And exercise something that we absolutely need to do to cope with depression. If we are not regularly exercising and we are depressed, then that is one of the very first things I would do. You don't need a gym membership to exercise. You don't need anything except for your own body. And we all have our own bodies. All of our bodies aren't perfect, and we all don't have the same physical capacity to exercise. And perhaps some of us are paralyzed, so that's not exactly an option. So I wouldn't say all of us have that as an option. But I would say most of us probably do. All the wind outside was making my nose run for some reason. It's a lovely thing to include in a YouTube video. YouTube. So, if you're not exercising and you're dealing with depression and you expect medications or other things to cure your depression, I mean, they still might help, but I would highly advise you to exercise. 
have an exercise routine. Don't feel like you have to do everything. One thing that helped me and made a world of a difference for me is to set aside eight minutes every morning to exercise before doing anything else. Set aside those eight minutes. Eight different exercises, one exercise per minute. Make sure you are exercising a different part of your body each minute. And that is really all it takes to make a giant difference in your life. Stretching is important as well as part of exercise. Mm. Not sure I'm a fan of how those colors turned out, but that's okay. One of the great things about canvases is you can always paint over them if you don't like what you've painted. Painting doesn't have to be a creation of a masterpiece, especially when you're painting as a distraction from depression. It's more like a relaxation technique for me. So if you're not exercising, establish a simple exercise routine. Don't start with something super intense. I mean, you can, but it's harder to stick to than something that's just eight minutes every morning. And do it in the morning because it's hard to put off if you do it the first thing. The next thing that I've talked a lot about in previous videos that are no longer on my channel for reasons I do not want to disclose is doing various mind hacks. You can convince your mind that your needs are actually being met when they're not being met to give your mind a bit of repose from reality. Many of us do this in negative pursuits like drugs alcohol, hardcore pornography, but it doesn't have to be done that way. There are positive ways to distract yourself from reality. There are positive ways to trick your mind into momentarily believing your needs are being met. And I'm going to explore those more in depth in future videos. I've talked about learning how to consciously control adrenaline, and that goes along with exercise. If you're too tired to exercise, guess what? The human body is consciously capable, it's capable, physically capable, of consciously controlling how you release adrenaline and when and how you have adrenaline rushes. Those adrenaline rushes can provide momentary bursts of energy through increasing the oxygen and the blood supply to your muscles. We need that oxygen. We need the sugar in our blood. And adrenaline releases more sugar into our blood and can give us bursts of energy and make it more possible for us to exercise when we're coping with depression. So I will remake my video on consciously controlling adrenaline. But like I said before, I've had a lot of various challenges in my life recently. So that video has been delayed for some time. And I don't imagine just finding another brush here. It's an interesting brush. Never painted with a plastic brush like that. Let's give that a try. What was I saying? Oh yes. Um, it's gonna, be, gonna take me some time to recreate those videos on consciously controlling adrenaline, consciously controlling dopamine. And all of those are the mind hacks where you can 
trick your brain into thinking that your needs are being met without doing any hardcore drugs, and you can experience that same sense of euphoria without breaking your mind or ruining your life and ending up in some gutter somewhere. Not sure if I like that. No, nope, not a fan of this brush. Too stiff, too awful. We will not be using you for this project brush. Ah, yes. Nope. This will work. I am no painting expert, as you can tell. But again, the point of art is not to be good at it, unless you're trying to sell it for money. The point of art, when it comes to a distraction from depression, the point of art is to enjoy yourself in the moment. So in the future, I will talk more about those mind hacks, but you can consciously control how your body releases adrenaline. You can use things like hypnosis to overcome insomnia and to trick your brain into thinking you are in a safe place, even if you don't feel like you're in a safe place. And that can help you sleep. It's one of the main reasons for insomnia, is feeling like you're not safe. But I want to challenge everyone out there. If you are currently struggling with depression or anxiety or stress, all those things are interrelated. I would challenge you all to find a distraction I think I'm actually done with this. I kind of like how this turned out. I like the feel of it. it. Reminds me of the ocean. Sort of like a flower in a wave or something. I don't know. I like it. Kind of expresses my feeling of how I really want to visit the ocean right now, but I can't. I'm in the middle of nowhere in the desert. But while I'm painting a picture like this, I can feel like I'm visiting the ocean. And that's the important thing to activities like this, and I challenge everyone out there, if you're experiencing stress, depression, or anxiety, to find an activity to distract yourself from those things, where you can just exist in the moment and enjoy life. Just put off those other things and enjoy something. It doesn't matter if it looks good, it doesn't matter if you can make money from it, just put off all those other concerns and enjoy life. And that is one of the main ways I have survived for so long, is that I have learnt to enjoy life, to just shut off the rest of the world and find different outlets for enjoying life. And I would challenge you to find positive ways to do so don't get into things like drugs. They will destroy you and they will destroy your loved ones. Don't get into things like alcoholism. It will do the same. Don't get into things like hardcore pornography and things that will just eat you from the inside out. Instead, find healthy pursuits that don't hurt anyone, that allow you to express how you feel in a way that allows you to escape and be constructive and not destructive. And that's all I have for you today. Have a great one, and please, um, oh, before I go, I wanted to address something. One of my commenters said that most of us in the world are not really having all of our needs met. And I think that's very true, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this. There's a difference between having our survival needs met 
and having all of those needs met on Maslow's hierarchy of needs that we talked about last time. And most of us don't have all those needs met. We live in a world where there is a select elite few that can have all those needs met. And because of that, we all need to find ways to cope with not having those needs met. And I believe we can. And I hope that I can help others that have struggled as I have find healthy ways to cope and to expand your mind and to strengthen your mind and your body to deal with the challenges of not having all those needs met. Anyway, that's all I have. I hope you have a good one. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you haven't watched my other videos on coping with depression, please do that as well, because they will put this video in more context. And have a great one.